In this lesson, we will learn what it means for a function to be not defined at a point, specifically when a function takes the form 0 over 0. But before we actually do that, let's quickly see what it means for a function to be defined at a point. So let's see a function defined at a point. So for that, suppose I have a function defined as y as a function of x given by x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Now suppose I want to determine the value of this function when x is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 1, the corresponding value of this function, which is f of 1, is given by substituting x is equal to 1 in this expression. That's quite simple. So it's 1 squared minus 4 over 1 minus 2, and which on simplification will give me 3. So what we see here that for x is equal to 1, the corresponding value of this function comes out to be 3, which is a fixed number. And I would like to mention here that whenever I say a number, I mean a real number. We are dealing here with real numbers. So for x is equal to 1, f of 1 comes out to be 3. In this case, we say that this function is defined at x is equal to 1. Why it is defined at x is equal to 1? Because at x is equal to 1, the corresponding value of this function is, is some fixed real number. And we also say that this 1 belongs to the domain of this function. So do you know what is the meaning of the domain of a function? So I will write it down quickly that domain of a function is a collection or a set of all those values of x. Obviously, they belong to R because we are dealing with real numbers such that the corresponding values of a function also belong to the set of real numbers. So the domain of a function is the set of all those values of x for which the corresponding values of a function belong to the set of real numbers. So in this case, we say that 1 belongs to the domain of this function because for x is equal to 1, the corresponding value of this function is 3 which belongs to the set of real numbers. So just to make it clear that the domain of a function is the collection of x values, it is not the collection of y values. So it is 1 which belongs to the domain of this function. So this is a little bit about a function defined at a point. Now let's see what it means for a function to be not defined at a point. So a function not defined or undefined at a point. So I'm going to take the example of the same function that is y which is given by x square minus 4 over x minus 2. Now let's suppose I have to determine the value of this function when x is equal to 2. So when x is equal to 2, value of this function that is f of 2 is given by substituting x is equal to 2 in this expression and which will give us 2 square minus 4 over 2 minus 2 and which on simplification will give me 0 over 0. So do you think that this 2 belongs to the domain of this function? Look, here we saw that for x is equal to 1, f of 1 is a fixed number. That is why x is equal to 1 belongs to the domain of this function. Now here for x is equal to 2, f of 2 comes out to be 0 over 0. So does it represent a fixed number? Does it belong to the set of real numbers? So let's first resolve what is the 0 over 0 and then we'll decide if 2 belongs to the domain of this function or not. So let's quickly see what is this 0 over 0. So in order to understand it, I'm going to take two different cases and in the case 1, 
I'm going to take all the non-zero numbers. So all non-zero numbers. Let's represent it by n. Now, when we take a non-zero number and multiply it by 1, what do we get? Again, the same non-zero number. That is n times 1 is n. There is no number other than 1 which when multiplied by n will give you n. So this 1 is the unique number which when multiplied by n will give you n. For example, if you take a non-zero number, say 2, so 2 times 1 is equal to 2. Or if you take, say, 5, so 5 times 1 is equal to 5. So there is no number other than 1 which multiplied by 2 will give you 2. Similarly, there is no number other than 1 which when multiplied by 5 will give you 5 and so on. For any non-zero number, this is true. So n times 1 is equal to n. It also implies that n divided by n is equal to 1. Similarly, 2 times 1 is equal to 2 means 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1 and so on. Now let's see what happens if we take the case of the number 0. So if I take just the number 0, in that case, I can write 0 times 0 is equal to 0. I can write 0 times 1 is equal to 0. I can write 0 times 100 is equal to 0. So which means no matter which number we take and multiply it by 0, the result is always 0. But in the case of non-zero numbers, we have a unique number 1, which when multiplied by any non-zero number will give you that non-zero number. But in the case of 0, there is no uniqueness. Whatever number you take and multiply it by 0, the answer is 0. So see, 0 times 0 is equal to 0. It means that 0 over 0 is 0. But then 0 times 1 is 0. It means that 0 over 0 is 1. Again, 0 times 100 is equal to 0 means that 0 over 0 is 100. And in this way, I mean 0 divided by 0 can be any number. So see, here there is no problem. It is true that 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, 0 times 100 is 0, that's true. But the problem lies here. Because in this case, we see that 0 over 0 is not unique or fixed. 0 over 0 is 0 also, 0 over 0 is 1 also, 0 over 0 is 100 also. I mean 0 over 0 can be any number. So which number you want me to take as an answer to this 0 over 0? And I cannot say that this 0 over 0 is equal to 1. As we say in the case of non-zero numbers, like 2 over 2 is equal to 1. In this case, I cannot give preference to any specific number over other numbers. So which means that this 0 over 0 is not defined. So now let's come back to our discussion where we were determining the value of this function when x is equal to 2. And we saw that at x is equal to 2, f of 2 is 0 over 0. So now we know that this 0 over 0 is not defined. So it is undefined. And in this case, we say that this function is not defined at x is equal to 2. And why is this not defined at x is equal to 2? Because for x is equal to 2, the corresponding value of this function is not defined. It's not a fixed number. So it's also true then that this number 2 does not belong to the domain of this function. Recall what is the meaning of the domain of a function. So the domain of a function is the collection of all those values of x for which the corresponding values of a function belong to the set of real numbers. But here, for x is equal to 2, the corresponding value of this function does not belong to the set of real numbers.
Now at this point, I would like to mention one more thing here that this is not just the only way in which a function could not be defined. We will learn more as we'll advance in our lessons. Now before I finish this lesson, I would like to quickly show you the graph of this function which I have right here. Here. So you can see here that for x is equal to 1, the corresponding value of this function is 3 which is represented by the green dot here. But for x is equal to 2, we see that there is a break in the graph. So we cannot say that this 4 is the value of this function when x is equal to 2. That would be absolutely wrong. For x is equal to 2, f of 2 is 0 over 0, which is not defined. And which we represent by this hollow circle. So for x is equal to 2, there is no value of this function. This function is not defined. And there are other ways in which the graph of any function has holes or breaks, which we'll discuss later. Now we can see graphically that this function is defined on the set of all real numbers except for x is equal to 2. So which means what should be the domain of this function? So... So the domain of this function, I'm writing it symbolically. So domain of this function is equal to the collection of all values of x such that x should not be equal to 2. So although graphically we see that x is equal to 2 is the only point where this function is not defined. In the lesson number 2, we'll see algebraically that there is no number other than 2 for which this function is not defined.